So welcome everyone to today's um, program, Weathering the Storm in Agriculture and How to Cultivate a Productive Mindset. Um, I wanna thank you for joining us today. And um, today we're gonna talk a bit about stress and develop some strategies to deal with that stress. And our presenters today are uh, Jesse Ketterman and from University of Maryland Extension, and he's an Extension educator in um, family finance and uh, financial capability. And I'm with the University of Delaware Cooperative Extension. I'm Maria Papitas, and I'm an Extension educator also in uh, family finance. One of the things that we know is that agriculture ranks among the most hazardous of industries. And farmers that are, are at a really high rate for fatal and non-fatal industries, according to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. This rate of injury leads to stress. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the industry sector that represents agriculture has ranked third in the number and rate of fatal work indus industry injuries, excuse me. Farmers and ranchers and other agriculture managers had a fatal work injury rate of about 24 out of 100,000 full-time equivalent workers, and that compares to a rate of about three and a half out of 100,000 for all workers in all occupations. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Every day, approximately 100 agricultural workers suffer an injury leading to lost work, work, work time, right, and in some cases pay. In addition, farmers often have additional financial pressures as well as issues involving property, weather, animals, and crops. It's important that we all learn how to manage our stress levels and to reduce the effects of unwanted stress. Too much stress can make us more accident prone and it can affect our health. And we can start by learning to identify common stressors, recognize uh, symptoms of stress and manage stress. By doing these three things, you can make your workplace safer and live a more fulfilled life. So let's start by defining stress. What is stress? Stress is defined as the need or the demand people confront that is perceived as burdensome or threatening, and it can lead to physical and mental health problems. Of course, not all stress is bad. You know, when we're excited about something like a wedding or a birthday or a holiday, we can feel anticipation and that helps us get mentally and physically ready for that event. And this type of stress is called eustress. It energizes us. It, it's what keeps us going during uh, seeding or harvesting time uh, in the life of, of farmers. However, when we suffer too much stress and particularly if it is over a long period of time, that is when it's called distress. And prolonged distress can result in severe physical problems, emotional problems, or both. And in many areas, a high percentage of visits to the family physician are due to stress-related illnesses. So one of the things that we sent you uh, and suggested that we print out was a handout that said, my action plan. And I'm hoping that you printed it out. And um, as we kind of go through the next uh, few slides, you might begin to um, listen and look at one of the first questions is, you know, recognizing um, your symptoms of stress. So as we go through that, maybe if we go through the next few slides, you can take some notes about what are your signs and symptoms of stress. So as you can see here, when we think about signs of stress, we tend to kind of organize them based on signs within the body, the mind, and our actions. And we all feel stress differently. And so um, as we go through these lists, as I mentioned, you might just jot them down. When we think about um, you know, body stress, 
here are some of the symptoms that show up, right? Headaches, stomach aches, back aches, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, maybe a racing heart. Um, sometimes it's nausea. <clears throat> when we think about the mind symptoms, we might be thinking about feeling anxious, um, angry, sad, bitter or resentful, depressed, or, or maybe even hopeless. On the action side of things, there may be symptoms like not being able to sleep or on the flip side, sleeping too much. Um, again, there may be that symptom of not wanting to eat or for some it may be the opposite and they want to overeat. Um, there may be an increased use of cigarettes or drugs or alcohol. You know, you might break things or yell or throw things. Um, and then sometimes um, some people just withdraw. I really encourage you to look at that, look at this list and then maybe jot down some of the things that you experience um, when you're stressed into your action plan. And if you have a hard time thinking about yourself, think about those people who are in your life that you really care about. Oftentimes we're really good at identifying stress in others before we're even identifying, before we're even able to identify stress in our own selves. So what are some of those root causes? What do you think are some of the stressors that farmers are facing? So here's some of the things that we've come up with, right? Certainly many of the things that you all just identify, right? Weather, right? And, you know, this can be kind of acute weather, uh, unexpected, unpredictable weather. But weather is a stressor because it may impact how well crops turn out or what the yield may be. Um, and ultimately, right, how much farmers are able to bring in financially. And so a major weather event can really impact uh, the earning potential for a, se a, a season. And weather can sort of be considered um, both an acute, you know, uh, a stressor, but it can also be a chronic stressor. And especially with um, changes in our climate patterns and people not really understanding and knowing what's going to happen with our client climate, um, it, it is becoming more of a kind of a chronic stressor. Another item is large debt loads, right? Farmers take on a lot of debt to expand operations or for land improvements or to buy or repair or replace equipment to keep the farm running, uh, to cover operating expenses. You know that um, like the cash flow of a farming situation can be very difficult. Um, and then you know, there may be loans just to recover from some sort of natural disaster or weather event. So that could be a major stressor. Um, thirdly here is government regulations. And it can be a source of stress because it can impact many different aspects of the farm as a business. And that may be regulations around animals, crops, how the land is used, labor, uh, as well as other things. Health insurance has been a big one lately. Machinery breakdown would be an example of an acute disruptive event that would require time, money, and repair a skill to resolve. Crop yields, right, and livestock illnesses can be um, chronic stressors over time because it really impacts someone's ability to cover financial uh, obligations. And from a livestock perspective, it's this whole idea of, you know, will the illness recur? You know, how does it spread? Will it spread through the rest of the animals? Um, and what are the consequences? Are there going to be large vet bills, for example? Next to last is this idea of commodity prices, and they certainly fluctuate over time and can impact the financial well-being of the farm. Um, and this can be considered a chronic stressor, especially with all the ups and downs that have happened over the last few years uh, around the trade wars and, and whatnot. And lastly, we have kind of the disagreements within the family. And oftentimes, uh, the whole family is involved in the farm, either, um, you know, strategically or because they're living there are involved at some, at some level. 
And so there may be disagreements about important decisions that impact the well-being of the farm or the family. And this can be a chronic stressor if there's, you know, if conversations occur often um, or there may be big decisions that need to be make, made. Um, and then sometimes there may be, a t there may often be issues that may be more of an acute a stressor, meaning it's not something that happens um, all the time, but it's a big decision. Cramming for a test? Trying to get more done than you have time to do? Stress is a feeling we all experience when we are challenged or overwhelmed. But more than just an emotion, stress is a hardwired physical response that travels throughout your entire body. In the short term, stress can be advantageous, but when activated too often or too long, your primitive fight or flight stress response not only changes your brain, but also damages many of the other organs and cells throughout your body. Your adrenal gland releases the stress hormones cortisol, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. As these hormones travel through your bloodstream, they easily reach your blood vessels and heart. Adrenaline causes your heart to beat faster and raises your blood pressure, over time causing hypertension. Cortisol can also cause the endothelium, or inner lining of blood vessels, to not function normally. Scientists now know that this is an early step in triggering the process of atherosclerosis, or cholesterol plaque buildup in your arteries. Together, these changes increase your chances of a heart attack or stroke. When your brain senses stress, it activates your autonomic nervous system. Through this network of nerve connections, your big brain communicates stress to your enteric or intestinal nervous system. Besides causing butterflies in your stomach, this brain-gut connection can disturb the natural rhythmic contractions that move food through your gut, leading to irritable bowel syndrome, and can increase your gut sensitivity to acid, making you more likely to feel heartburn. Via the gut's nervous system, stress can also change the composition and function of your gut bacteria, which may affect your digestive and overall health. Speaking of digestion, does chronic stress affect your waistline? Well, yes. Cortisol can increase your appetite. It tells your body to replenish your energy stores with energy-dense foods and carbs, causing you to crave comfort foods. High levels of cortisol can also cause you to put on those extra calories as visceral or deep belly fat. This type of fat doesn't just make it harder to button your pants. It is an organ that actively releases hormones and immune system chemicals, called cytokines, that can increase your risk of developing chronic diseases, such as heart disease and insulin resistance. Meanwhile, stress hormones affect immune cells in a variety of ways. Initially, they help prepare to fight invaders and heal after injury. But chronic stress can dampen the function of some immune cells, make you more susceptible to infections, and slow the rate you heal. Want to live a long life? You may have to curb your chronic stress. That's because it has even been associated with shortened telomeres the shoelace tip ends of chromosomes that measure a cell's age. Telomeres cap chromosomes to allow DNA to get copied every time a cell divides without damaging the cell's genetic code, and they shorten with each cell division. When telomeres become too short, a cell can no longer divide, and it dies. As if all that weren't enough, chronic stress has even more ways it can sabotage your health, including acne, hair loss, sexual dysfunction, headaches, muscle tension, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, and irritability. So, what does all this mean for you? Your life will always be filled with stressful situations, but what matters to your brain and entire body is how you respond to that stress. If you can view those situations as challenges you can control and master, rather than as threats that are insurmountable, you will perform better in the short run and stay healthy in the long run.
So the, the video was very informative, but it was a little bit on the technical side, right? And, and so I think the point that you need to walk away with from the video is that prolonged stress is not healthy. And I think, you know, we would, we would all agree with that and, and, and understand that. The other thing is, you know, there are, there is good stress, right? If it's a short term thing, the adrenaline and so forth helps us get through quick situations. It's that prolonged thing uh, that we're, we're worried about. And so, uh, so when it comes to, to, to what you need to know about cortisol, cortisol is that stress hom hormone, right? And it, it's released in times of fear or stress. So that's, that's, we know that. And it kind of acts like a sugar in your body. And then the, the negative effects of cortisol over time, it can affect your immune system. Uh, it can uh, suppress digestive and reproductive systems and uh, su suppress uh, growth as well. It, it also affects our mood, our fears, our motivation. So those are all kind of some of the effects. And then over time, it can lead to health problems and when some of those health problems include heart disease, lowered immune system response, uh, digestive problems, sleep problems, uh, issues with memory and concentration, weight gain, anxiety, depression, and in the end it can affect your, your life expectancy. So those are all things that we need to be aware of. And that's why it's important that we need to kind of manage stress and develop some strategies to deal with stress. Uh, you can see the one on the left is clear. So, so the, your brain, when you don't have that cortisol run through, it kind of gives you that example that you can see through it. It's clear. And then when you introduce that cortisol, uh, you know, things become cloudy and it, and it makes things a little more difficult. And, and so over time, you know, it, it affects your, your, your thinking, right? Cause that stress can affect your thinking. And so if we were in person, we'd take a, a jar and we'd shake it up and show that, but, what we have here is uh, again a good example with the two with the two pictures we have so let's let's shift into effective coping strategies and so you know our coping strategy is kind of like a toolbox right and if we only have a hammer then we're going to treat everything like a nail and, and and so it's important that that you you start to recognize what you have in your to, your toolbox one of the handouts that we we sent to you was called my coping strategies plan and so you might want to take that out and look at that. And that coping strategies plan goes through uh, six different areas in terms of some strategies in terms of coping, but uh, just to, to get you engaged a little bit, you know, so some physical strategies, you know, get your medical checkup, make sure you're eating a healthy breakfast, making sure that you're drinking enough water throughout a day, that you're getting your fruits and vegetables, um, that you're getting at least, uh, 20 minutes of exercise daily, uh, some, some mental items to do. You know, you have a hobby, you can engage in that hobby. Uh, some people relax, I do this, watching TV at the end of the night, it kind of settles me down. Some people enjoy reading a book, uh, others listening to music. And so some of the, the examples that we have in the chat box are people getting enough sleep and more water, uh, taking a walk and eating, that deep breathing exercise. Yep, all good examples. Uh, a couple other strategies um, in the toolbox that, that uh, with my coping strategies plan, uh, spend time with a pet, take 15 minutes each day to have an uninterrupted conversation with a spouse, spend time playing games. That's one of the things that my plan, you know, with, with the response to COVID, which has created this own set of stress you know, one of the things my family has been able to do is take time every evening and play some type of game. Uh, sometimes it's card games, sometimes it's video games. Uh, but, but we try to spend some time together uh, just working through things and just relaxing uh, through playing games. You know, there's also that piece of, of putting things in the frame of mind of what are the things that you control versus things that you don't, don't control. Um, when it comes to the financial side, looking at you know your spending plan and 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 again looking at how by doing that you know it can help uh, come up with a plan that's going to help reduce stress. So it's not an immediate thing, but it is a strategy uh, as, as opposed to just ignoring your finances when things are tough. So uh, like I said, that coping strategies toolbox a lot of information there, and, and I, I encourage you to look through that. 
a couple other responses we had is uh, deep breathing and, and meditation, which are also good things. And, and we're going to practice that a little bit. So let me get back to the PowerPoint. So here are some key points. When you start thinking about uh, tools in your toolbox, you know, th there are definitely ways that we cope with stress that are poor ways, right? And some of those things could be self-medication, uh, alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, those can be poor ways. So when we're thinking about uh, our, our tools in our toolbox, here are some items to, to consider. First, you got to think about, you know, how you manage your stress, right? And then when you do that, you can think, okay, is this a, a, a good way to manage it or a bad way to manage it or a poor way to manage it? manage it. Uh, think about matching the strategy uh, you have with the particular need. So not every strategy is going to be effective to your situation. So you got to make sure that when you identify a strategy, it's going to help address that item that's, that's creating stress. You know, brainstorm again, think about different ways that you can deal with it. Uh, sometimes brainstorming includes talking with others, right? Getting uh, thoughts and ideas from other people. And this is one of the things that can be challenging for farmers because you know, for, for uh, a vast majority of farmers, they are isolated, they, they work on their farms and, and don't interact with a lot of people throughout the given day. So taking some time to reach out and communicate with others is also an important, important step in, in strategy. And, and uh, the, you know, the last point there, learning new strategies or, or adopting different ways to manage stress. You know, again, there are things that you probably haven't tried that you should try. And so that's, Again, you go back to that My Coping Strategies toolbox. There's a lot of things you can do and, and try to implement some of those things. So now we're gonna kind of go through um, three different strategies that you can engage in to manage stress. And so there's a handout that goes along with this. You were sent something that says uh, how to cultivate a productive mindset. And the three strategies that we're gonna work through today, one is self-talk, the other is acceptance, and the other is, is breathing. So you know, what uh, basically, as this loads up, I'll start talking about the self. Self-talk is the first strategy we're going to talk about. Um, you know, and, and one that is kind of changing your mindset, right? You can, you can focus on the negative or start to reframe and focus on the positive. And so you know, I always think about, you know, thing of when you would look in the mirror, you look in the mirror and say, yeah, I can do this. I know I can get through this. It's just a temporary thing. So that's that concept of self self-talk, reframing uh, the conversation that you have internally in terms of the dialogue so that it is a, is a positive conversation as opposed to focusing on the negative. The second strategy is how do you uh, pick three words? And so if you can move forward a couple slides. And so the body hears what your mind thinks. You can see that there on the slides. Uh, so choose thoughts with a purpose. And so again, try choosing, and you can write these down on a piece of paper, identify three words that would help you maintain a mindset. So you may choose calm, capable, and controlled, right? That, those are the examples that we have. And so by thinking about, this is how I'm gonna deal with it. I'm gonna deal with things in a calm and controlled manner. That's gonna help you prepare mentally in terms of dealing with the stress that you're experiencing. So those are the first two strategies. Again, that's that concept of self-talk and, and picking three words, and they're all in the uh, how to cultivate a productive mindset. So strategy two uh, has to do with using your breath. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people oftentimes think that this is a very weird thing to do, but, you know, when faced with a challenge, you know, as we saw in that weird video is, you know, our cortisol really just increases. It can change the way our body functions. It can increase our heart rate and whatnot. And so I really, you know, encourage you to think about that jar with the, for lack of a better word, dirt in it, right? Um, and so when you take deep breaths and we're stressed and our brain is full of that cortisol, breathing can really help calm you down. And especially if you're in a heated argument <laughs> or um, frustrated about something that could then, if you do the wrong thing, you could hurt yourself, right? Taking those breaths can really begin to 
change your uh, heart rate and get you kind of more on an even keel. Strategy three is really about um, acceptance, using acceptance. And many of us have heard the expression like, I've got a lot on my plate, right? So thinking about all of the different things that's on your plate is um, a good activity, right? Taking out a piece of paper and just writing down all of the things that is on your plate helps you to really see and understand, you know, why you might be feeling stressed out, right? After you do that, I would encourage you to think about and circle the things that are on your plate that you really don't have any control over, and yet we worry about them. And most will say, you know, if you do this activity, most people will say they circled almost everything or, or the whole plate. And yet, you know, these are things that we don't, we don't always have control about, control over. And so that's really telling, right? It tells us that we tend to be the most stressed over things that we really don't have any control over. And not all problems can be solved and not all situations can be changed. And this is where acceptance can really help. When things are beyond our control, the most productive thing we can do is just accept it. Making acceptance a part of your mindset can save you time and energy and it helps us focus on solutions instead of getting frustrated by the problem. So Try to make acceptance, you know, or the word accept part of your self-talk and using deep breathing as a time to pause and accept and kind of begin that problem solving. And so when you think about um, your action plan, right, maybe that is one of the things that you, you kind of check off on that action plan, some of those self-care activities that you can use to really help you feel better. The other thing that is important, right, many, as I said earlier, oftentimes we recognize stress in other people before we even recognize stress in ourselves. And one of the things I know and have noticed with farm audiences is they are some of the most caregiving people. They're so willing to help others. Um, and so we oftentimes want to know how can we best help someone else. And so one of the things um, we wanted to point you to is uh, responding, the publication that we sent to you, responding to people who are distressed, right, or maybe youth that are distressed and how to help them. And so when one of the really things that's really important to recognize is that, you know, farmers and suicide is, is kind of prevalent right now. We're hearing about it in the news and we want to be, we, we want to be grounded about this. And we want to accept that some people are really pushed to the edge and they are having thoughts about suicide. And oftentimes we really don't know what to do or to say. And what our research is really saying is you need to be direct. It is not gonna be, it's not gonna push them over the edge, <laughs> right? That's what I think we're always so afraid of. If I bring up the word suicide, it's gonna create some sort of acceptance around it and then people will go and do it. But the opposite is actually true. So you might need to know how to ask someone directly about thoughts of suicide. Um, and that's okay. And asking directly, as I said, does not increase the risk of suicide and actually may provide the person with relief that someone actually sees their struggle. So the question on the screen is one way to ask whether someone is thinking about suicide. Obviously there's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, um, and that's a tool uh, that is national, obviously, and is a great place to um, connect to, uh, you know, and to, in the case of, you know, if you're with someone and they're um, saying that they have thought about it and are, are thinking about it, um, 
you know, to sit by them potentially while they call, right? Or sit in the next room if they're shy about talking in front of you. But um, it's a very useful resource and it's a national number. And what happens is that when you call it, it, it reroutes the calls to regional centers and all of the responders through this lifeline have been trained in how to talk with people who are experiencing distress and who may be thinking about suicide. So they can really help to make suggestions to that person about, you know, what to do to get help. And um, this resource is, is available for individuals who are struggling, even if they aren't thinking about suicide. And it's so it's available for people who are, who are trying to help others. And so there's the link and the phone line. Okay, next slide. So here are some other useful um, resources that are kind of national in nature. Um, Center for Rural Affairs, the, the crisis text line. There are lots of people who uh, use a text line because um, they don't really feel comfortable talking with someone. And so a text line is a really great resource. Um, <clears throat> the mental health first aid training is a great uh, resource if you're wanting to learn more about that. Uh, there's those, um, those phone lines again. And then there's one for veterans as well. In Delaware, um, we have the Delaware uh, Division of Substance Abuse and Mental Health. Um, the, the website is there. They have two mobile crisis intervention services. And so there's hotlines for Northern Delaware and one for Southern Delaware. In uh, Delaware, we have um, several um, mental health associations and we have the contact lifeline, which is a 24 seven, you know, call in call in number uh, as well. And so um, those are really great resources. And then um, I'm going to turn it over to Jesse who's going to talk a little bit about some of the Maryland resources and and bring us into the home plate here. So some of the resources that are available in Maryland are the Maryland Network of Care. Uh, and there's a website there for that uh, pro bono counseling. And again, there's a website up there for that. The Center for Healthy Families out of the University of Maryland uh, also has resources. And then we have the uh, University of Maryland Extension as a farm stress resources website that you could visit. And then another one, uh, we have a Save a Shore Farmer. And, and one of the things is, uh, I want to do is if, and so as we kind of wrap things up, you know, where do we go from here? I think one of the things that, that we hope that you, that you gathered from this is, is that you were able you're in a better position to identify some signs of, of, of stress. Uh, you have some resources such as my action plan that you could use for yourself or use for uh, or hand to others. Uh, some, some coping strategies that we were able to share. And I think the most important thing is get the word out there and, and let people know that there is help out there for them, uh, whether it's for yourself or for someone else, but, but there is help and there, there are strategies that you can you can implement that will help reduce your stress. 